Hey there, Professor O'Kane here. I've been teaching guitar for over 30 years. Jesus. And I've taught everybody from Lauren Hill to rank and file beginners. And I love teaching all levels. And I was teaching a beginner the other day and I was thinking, you know, if I had known these lessons early on, like maybe within the first two months, I would have shaved years off of my practice time. And I wanted to share with you some of these techniques that I use and some of these techniques that I teach. And I hope that it'll also help you, you know, get to where you wanna go quicker. So one quick, easy, dirty trick that you can use is something that we call a common tone. And what it is, is if you have a C chord right here, this note, which happens to be C, will stay, it'll remain, or it will be a common tone if you do A minor. So C to A minor, this first finger doesn't go anywhere. So, and if I was to go to F major seven, it still stays. So in your chord progressions, that is one really great thing to look for. Look for the common tones, look for the finger that doesn't move. So if you were playing G, or as I like to call it, the pop G or the rock G, where you have the fourth at the top, the fourth being these two notes, and you call it a fourth because it's a fourth interval, as in one, two, three, four, it's four steps away. And you can also think of this interval sounding like, it's the interval that makes most men run. We have this G chord, and if you go to D, check out my third finger. It doesn't move. And I pivot off that third finger to play D. So if my chord progression was G to D. You see that the third finger doesn't move. Now a lot of people teach this, this technique. It's a pretty common thing for a lot of guitar teachers to teach. What if you're having a really hard time going from G to D, even with the common tone? Well, what you do is, first of all, you don't try to do it fast. Just like I said that sentence slow, you need to go that slow. So you create the context. In other words, the tempo is really the context because we're talking about practicing alone. So the tempo is the context. So if, I, um, if I'm operating under the guise of something really, f you know, fast, like this fast, that's really fast. Like you don't have a lot of time to go from G to D. And that means it'll probably, if you're not really good at, um, if you're not really good at switching the card, it'll probably sound like this. And that is a no-go. Never. Never. That is never good. And I think everybody, like all the guitar teachers on YouTube, would probably agree with that one thing. It's probably the only thing every guitar teacher agrees with. And that is, if you're not playing in time, it sucks. I mean, it really sucks. So what you do is you slow the tempo way down. And this is gonna require some discipline. Why? Because it is boring as f What's gonna be really exciting is you getting it. And I have a really good friend of mine who's a fantastic teacher. And he said, after you learn something in music, when it's still super fresh, brand new, you can play it perfect after that very first time that you learn it. No, you can play it perfect slowly. Who cares about playing it fast? Fast will come, okay? But you can play it perfect slowly. Now, what is the benefit of playing perfectly and only, and only doing it slowly? I say only. The benefit of playing it perfectly almost from the very beginning because let's say the first time you're kind of learning it, but the benefit of playing it perfectly from the beginning is you don't have to unlearn a mistake. Unlearning a mistake can take a week, it can take a month, 
depending upon who you are and how your brain works and how deeply you have ingrained it into the crevasses of your gray matter. We don't want to do that. Trust me, I've done that many, many, many times. I went to a teacher after just like breaking my bones over this particular thing and I'd get there and it would be wrong and he would be like, oh, uh, you know, you don't have that right. And then I would be like, oh, uh, and then trying to correct it there at the lesson, I couldn't. My nervous level went through the roof and it was, it was just a disaster. So you don't have to worry about the nervous level part because you're not doing it in front of anybody just yet. But I'm going to digress and say, if you keep it slow, you can make the change. Now, you might be saying, Professor Kane, how slow? Slow. Okay, so that means like one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Seven. One, two, three, four. C at nine. Two, three. See how the top fingers have an out move? Except when I play with D here, I just remove the fourth, and the third is still a common tone. But more important than the common tones and all of that other stuff is to play it dead slow. Now notice how I'm not making myself do a complicated strumming pattern. Why am I not doing a complicated strumming pattern? Because that makes it way more difficult to learn. Like, I mean, you're, you're worrying about this, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 down up, 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 up. You're not thinking about the time. You're thinking about st which stroke are you doing, and then you're trying to think about the left hand. It's too much. So what you do is you power it down. You power everything down to the most digestible parcel, okay? So I'm doing all downstrokes and I'm playing, well, I count it off a very slow tempo. One, two. Now, by the way, by the way, it is slow. So it's easy to mess that up because if, you, if you're thinking about it almost like an EKG, you know, you have blip, blip, blip. Now, do you know how, I, notice how I'm going up? Well, guess what? That is the and. So you have one, and two, and three, and. So when you count the ands, you can keep track of where you're at. Okay, so I'm counting like one, and two, and. and what part of my body is doing the ands? My foot, which you can't see, is doing one, two, but my right hand is doing the one and. One, and two. So that's how I'm dealing with the slow tempo. Remember, again, the slow tempo creates this context, this eco tempo of where oh, I'm so smart. It creates this villa. It creates this planet where you can play super slowly and play in time, make it feel good, and catch the right cards, okay? I cannot stress this enough. Now, there might be some people who are watching this that already play really well. Guys, this is for you too. I did it too. When you, if you look at my video with the Michael Brecker solo, I played that stuff so slowly, and I made sure it was ingrained really well. So under high pressure, which is the fast tempo, when you don't have time to think and you don't have time for slush in your technique, like there's no 
farting around. You need it to be dead on, like perfect. It happened because of that kind of workout. I cannot, again, I cannot stress it enough. You have to really focus on this aspect. And I know that the boredom factor is potentially large, but I'm pretty sure that you can, you know, muscle through it. I think you've been through some harder moments in your life than just doing that. Now you might say, Professor okay, it's too boring. Well, don't do it all day. Nobody's asking you to do that. If you do it a little bit, you're gonna get a lot of mileage from it. If you just concentrate uh, like 10 minutes of really concerted effort and trying to get things right, you will get it to where you're not even thinking when you're playing it. Etc. Okay, now the next segment. Now here's something that a lot of people have problems with. And that is, for instance, going from one grip, from one card, to something that's really difficult, like maybe C to a B flat bar card, I've never really seen anybody do this, even though it's probably been done before. I think everything's been done before, but check this one out. When you play C and you're, let's say you're going to an F bar card and every time you go like this, even if you're going slow and then you're like, uh, 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 and then you finally get it and it's like, Very frustrating, we've all been there. I've seen it, probably seen that one a million times. Okay, so first you have to get the chord grip sounding, right? So one of the things that usually happens when the chords don't sound right is you're not having adequate pressure. You are touching the string by getting the adequate pressure. In other words, you're like, you're muscling it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, you don't have it. Okay, so the first thing that you need to try and do is get pieces of the chord together. So let's say I have this note. Okay, grand. Oh, I got two notes now. Now I add this note and then I go like this. And then let's say I fix that and I'm pressing my first finger. Now the, the fifth string is messed up. Okay, so what you do is you take two notes at a time. So with the F chord, I got this one. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna think of keeping the pressure on these two and I'm gonna try and add the fourth finger. Now, if that works, brilliant. If it doesn't work, if I add the fourth finger and I'm getting a dud string, Take a break for a second, shake your hand out. I know you're stressed, okay? And what you're gonna do is take a breath. This all happens in real time, right? We're just doing it step by step right now, but take a breath. Then just try these two notes. Or let's say that fourth finger is still messing up. So you're like, oh, wait a second, I'm over the fret. Okay, got it. So now I got these two. You know what, I'm gonna just try and add the one above it. That's easy. Now I'm going to try and add that low string. I can just barely get it, let's say. That's progress. So what you do is, this isn't, um, you're not trying to just follow exactly what I did. Maybe you don't want to take these, um, these particular notes and isolate them. Maybe you wanted to isolate these two. Now this fingering might look really strange, but when I do this, it's the same fingers that are playing those notes. So I recommend isolating, isolating. A lot of guys and, and girls have a hard time playing these top two strings and they sound like So I don't put myself under the pressure of having to play any of these notes here. And what I do is I see if I can get those notes. And if I can't, then I'm gonna just try and press this note, which is the F, and then try now to get those two notes. Oh, it's a little bit bad, so. Aha, 
How did I do that? So then I try and determine how I did it, not how my teacher is doing it. Because my teacher might have ginormous hands or she might have tiny hands. Um, so what you want to do is find out what works for your hands. Now, that's really vague. But the technique of isolating notes is not vague at all. The order in which to isolate the notes is up to you. Okay, so I wouldn't call that vague. I would just say, choose the notes that you're having a difficult time with and put them together. Okay, wait a second. Those sound really good. That doesn't. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take off some of these notes and just see if I can press this down again. Okay, I'm making that sound. Okay, let me just try and play this again. Aha. Now I'm ready to add the top notes, etc. So that's how you muscle out. Actually, that isn't really muscling out. That's how you gain some experience in teaching yourself. Because ultimately, that's what you're going to be doing. Unless you're going to be taking lessons forever, which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's a whole nother video. Okay, so... So what we're going to just do is go from the F bar chord to C. F bar chord to C. Wait a second, here's a common tone. Aha. Aha. That is really good. So what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to now... I want to choose something that doesn't have a common tone. We're going to go from C to B flat. But it just goes to show you, even that thing that I did there, you know, you'd think that I would know that, but I've just done this since I was six. So I don't even think about it really anymore. So it's nice to see, oh wow, I can pivot off of this finger. And, you know, when we talk about common tones, you can think of those as pivots. If you don't like the word common tone, if it sounds too high hat for you. Okay, so we're going from C to B flat. C to B flat requires a lot of movement. So a lot of people have a very difficult time with that. They'll go, they'll play C, and then when they go to B flat, their hand, their, their splay, which is the stretch in your hand, kind of shrinks. So from C, if you go like this, uh, okay. It, aside from like planting one finger down, which is like the same old, same old, what you're going to do is you're going to practice this in the air, okay? So you see how my finger is in the C shape right now? I'm actually looking at the monitor, so um, I'm trying not to do that, but... So my C shape is like this, pretty much, and I can just keep it over the strings and then press down. A lot of people, a lot of beginners, tend to do this one two three then the first comes up and they come back down or any kind of order whatever you feel comfortable with is probably what you're going to end up doing for a long time until you sort this out and you just get to get it to where you can just boom slam it on and then have c so a cool thing to do is to be able to go in the air and kind of get the general shape of the card so my fingers are kind of in the shape of F. You know, if I push them down, yeah, they kind of fall right where F is. So you go airborne, you get your rotary blade license, rotary wing license, which is a helicopter, and then you switch in the air and push down. If I was going to go from here to F, or I'm sorry, to um, B flat again, I do this, let's say I go to D from here. I'm gonna go up in the air. Look how my fingers are already in a D shape. See, right there, boom. And it's a great way to practice is to be able to do this in the air like that. How about from D to F, look at that. Now, so if that might be new to you, but I'm gonna add another thing that's even newer, and that is visualizing. Visualization, you, they use it in sports all the time. 
And there's a lot of very good results and good science behind visualizing. So how would I visualize this? I look at the fretboard, okay? Now there's nothing wrong with looking at the fretboard right you know, in, the, in your beginning stages of playing, so you're, you're fine. So I'm looking at the D shape right now. I can see the D shape. I can see my fingers playing the D shape. And then I see my fingers going up in the air and now gripping the F bar chord. I can see that. Like it's my hand there. It might help even if you put your hand like this so you can get the feeling of your arm being kind of generally in the same place. So I can see the D shape and now I can see the F. Now I can see E and see G and see any shape that I want to and it really helps. So when I see D, now when I reach for it, bam, it's just right there. F, I can already see it, bam, it's right there. I know what E, my fingers look like playing E. And this is a super valuable way of trying to be able to have the cards before they get there. Bef wait, have your fingers playing the cards before they get there, okay? Now, after you have that, the last thing I would recommend doing is just blowing out every card that you know. Something like this. Now, you know, in my mind, I'm also doing it in time. So this is... And if this is too fast for you, you can hold each one out four beats. So it'll give you time to think. Three, four. Two, three, four. And what you can do is you can have a cheat sheet. So let's say your teacher has given you five cards to work on. Just have that sheet right there and look at it. After you've gone through some of the techniques that I've taught you, just go through that sheet and randomly choose cards to play. Try to do this in time as soon as possible. So that means after you get the initial grips, you're going to look at that paper and then that's what you're going to do. And you know what, guys? If you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to really get it together a lot quicker and actually a lot more solid than you probably would have gotten before this video. So if you like this lesson, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, don't hit the postman, and don't hit a semi-truck, okay? I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot for hanging out.